Well, who do we have here, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, it's my ex-wife and the woman who kept my last name, but not the real one that I have, but the I fake one that I... kept your first name as my last name. You kept, you kept what? My, you kept my... Your first name as my last name. As your last name. Uh, oh, yeah, my first real name as your yes. last name. Yes. I guess you could put it that way. How you doing, kiddo? I'm doing fine, finally out of the hospital. <laughs> yeah, now, but since we talked to you last, you were back in the hospital. Now, don't, don't get terribly worried, folks. It was a bunch of stuff that was a pain in the ass, right? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I was in twice, two weeks in a row for four days each. Yeah. <clears throat> because there was an internal bleed. And uh, they put a stent in me. Who knew there were stents that weren't about hearts? I didn't know that. Yeah. And then a clot formed, but not one that could go to the brain or the lung, fortunately. Yeah. But they still had to go take that out. That was the second week. And figure out what to do with me. And now I am on blood thinners and I wear this little bracelet the doctor said I should wear. It says blood thinning? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I mean, you know, if I got hit by a car, then they know that I could bleed to death. They better do something quick. Like what? Stop the bleeding. <laughs> I mean, but how? If your blood's too <laughs> thin. Well, however they do when you get hit by a truck. I don't know. You mean to say to me that all those baby aspirin I take every day don't thin my blood enough? No, it's different for every person, depending on what's happened to you. I took a baby aspirin until this started, and now... I jab myself with a needle twice every day for a blood thinner. Yeah. Oh, okay. Really? <laughs> I have a new skill, Alex. Oh, you have a new skill? No, I'll tell you, my wife has the same skill. She got allergies, so her doctor said, well, you have to shoot up every day. with Whenever you're itching, you shoot up with this stuff. And they came, had her come in for shooting up lessons. Me too. I yeah. had them before I yeah. left the hospital. Yes. I think the only reason they give you the lessons is they could tell you, well, here's how you do it. Boom. But most people have to get used to it. The idea of inoculating yourself kind of... It's not, it's not the best thing anybody ever tells you. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't imagine how uh, diabetics live their entire lives having to constantly test their blood do you know, and do insulin. Uh, the brother of a friend of mine, they both live in Israel, was visiting New York many years ago. Yeah. And his brother, who's a friend going back 30, 40 years, said, oh, you really should look up Ronnie. So the guy came to my house, and we're sitting there, and we're talking, and we're catching up with life and everything. And he says, oh, excuse me just a minute. And he pulled something out of his jacket pocket, and it was a syringe, and he slammed it in through his jeans into his thigh, and then put it away and said, okay, we're all right now. Having to do with his diabetes. <laughs> Man, I couldn't, uh, well, I guess after a while you just get used to it. I'm, I'm sure you're used to it now. Well, it's been about a week and a half, and uh, it took me a week. I, I do it at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., and I have to set alarms because it's not a habit with me. It's not something I've ever done. But they're terribly clever. I mean, I don't have to get it in a vein. It's just get it into fat. It has. Right. And, of course, then they starved me in the hospital, so I don't have any fat practically. But um, but there's some there to find. Um, and it's the first couple of times it was really hot. You know, you hesitate, you hesitate. But these syringes are terribly clever how they're made. They're just there and, you know, made with and stuff. The, the liquid is already in them. Right. And, but I have my own little biohazard dis red disposal unit now for that. Oh, really? Yeah. And when you're done, you push it a certain way, and a little thing comes out that covers the needle so nobody will touch it accidentally and get poked. And then I put it in my little biohazard little thing you know they're big ones at the hospital but mine yeah. is a little one and anytime i go up there i bring it with me and they'll dispose of them properly so i'm kind of used to it now so anyway see here here's the thing now ronnie does in case you haven't joined us before when she's been on has a, a blog called time goes by dot net you go to time goes by dot net and it's about what it's like to get old and it's a it's a it's a blog for for older people to read but younger people to understand aging i think as well mm -hmm. uh and uh, the one thing that i've always said now people always gripe about my show saying why do you talk so much about health 
And I'm going, because I've got a bunch of old people calling me, and that's who, all you ever talk about when you sit down to dinner. Dinner conversation is not any longer, it's not like, late anybody good lately? You know, it's, uh, what kind of medicine are you on? And what kind of plan do you have? And what, what's your supplemental? And uh, on and on and on and on and on. Well, old people are sicker than young people first, to start with. The older you get, the more there are diseases of aging, and that's cancer and diabetes and heart disease and Parkinson's disease and two or three more, that far huger numbers of old people get those so diseases. So far, I don't have people. any of those things. Well, good for you. My feet are numb, but that's about it, you know. <laughs> I mean, there are a few. What's that from? I don't know. I think it's a nerve in my back, a compressed nerve or something. But outside of that, and a little little arthritis here and there, uh, I I haven't succumbed to any of those yet. You know, I I'm told my heart has a mild stenosis, but that's nothing to worry about. So. What does stenosis mean? A uh, hardening of the uh, of the uh, oh, okay. heart or artery or something. I don't know. Well, it you know if you go by the numbers, by the data. Yeah. You know, cancer affects old people in much greater numbers than younger people, and so do all those other diseases that I, that I named. And the thing is, is that up until this happened to me almost a year ago, uh, the cancer. I mean, um, I was incredibly healthy all my life. By the way, pancre pat pancreatic cancer. She hit the jackpot. You're yeah. right. <laughs> you hit exactly. the jackpot on that one. Um, but they've declared me cancer free for now, and so I'm trying to find a way to live my life without that little shadow. Cancer can come back, often does. Uh, but to get, I, I don't suppose I can go back to what I was before don't because we, the consciousness is there. It's just there. Don't we all live with a shadow, though, as we get older? I mean, I know I do. Every day I wake up and go, is this the day I'm going to drop dead? You know? Oh, you, you were saying that when you were 20. Well, yes, that's true. <laughs> come on. You know me so well. Every, um, By the way, let me let me tell people you do not want. I could have uh, Marjorie come in here, and then I could leave the room, and they would just sit here telling stories about me. Oh, he does that too. Still does that. He still well, does well, that. Yeah. <laughs> Never get two wives together in the same room. Two ex-wives. Have you ever done that? You've oh, got I've more had than that. Marjorie and me. I've I've had two wives, or maybe two ex-girlfriends. Same thing. Uh, in the same room and then all they do is start slamming you you just sit in the corner and they keep looking over at you every now and then you know with these grimaces oh, you just reminded me yeah you know remember 9 11 yes i think i remember 9 11 <laughs> oh, well <laughs> the guy that i was dating came to my house because he lived in brooklyn and he couldn't get there. I mean, it would be hours and hours and hours walking, and he was in Manhattan. So he came and he knocked on my door and asked if he could uh, if he could stay there until he could get back home. There was no transportation. And it seems to me, I could be wrong, you know, memory and old age, but he and I are sitting there talking, and next thing I know, there's a knock on the door. And guess who was on the other side of the door? Who? You. Oh. <laughs> and, and you said you were in the neighborhood and you lived way uptown somewhere and couldn't get up there and so could. Oh, oh you, this was this near... was the this was yeah well this was no this wasn't it wasn't nine eleven it was a blackout because I wasn't here for nine eleven. Oh, was it a blackout? It, it was a blackout. Okay. Yeah, and I was at uh, the office which was on uh, uh, where was it Twenty Third Street and uh, it was too far for me to go uptown. There was no. Obviously, no subways running because no electric. You can't have subways. So uh, I decided to walk, and I couldn't. Call, did I call you first? No. No. I tried to. I think no I tried to call you, but the phones weren't working that well. The cell phones weren't working that well. So I just figured I'd take a chance, and I walked down to your place, and I knocked on the door, thinking, "Hey, can I have refuge?" <laughs> Well, then what happened yeah. is Stan Hope was there, mm -hmm. and he was a well-known news producer. Very, very interesting and, night in my life, by the way, talking with Stan Hope. Well, this you is know. what I meant. I might as well not have been there. Oh, You two were telling all of your media <laughs> war stories. Uh, saying, didn't we go out for a walk in the dark and 
around the neighborhood too when we couldn't see anything. Right. But mostly you guys talked about all of your media war stories from all your jobs. And I, I just went to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he taught me a, a lot of lessons also about, about television journalism that he had been through. And one of the main lessons he, he taught me and that I use to this day when I'm in a discussion, is that in the old days when they used to do documentaries, like the Murrow documentaries and so on, he said, it would, they'd give us eight months, a year, to get that documentary together, and now you gotta get it together in three weeks. Yes. Well, you can't do a documentary in three weeks. I mean, if you were you doing- You can't do it well in three weeks. Ask any Nature Life photographer, you could not do a Nature Life documentary in three weeks because you gotta wait for at least three weeks for that ant to bring the leaf up the hill, <laughs> you know? Yes. <laughs> so he, ta he t told me all about that, and he, you know, what he felt was wrong with, with journalism in, by that time, that it was just, it was, it was, you had to do it fast. You had to get it done fast, you know? And if you took three weeks on a, on a story, that was considered extravagance. Stanhope had a byword that we would go to dinner, or we're sitting around drinking mm -hmm. wine or talking in the evening, usually politics um, or government. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, even then, pre-Trump, there was a lot to complain about. And the evening would be winding down and we'd both be getting tired and he would always end it with, Ronnie, nothing is getting any better. <laughs> well, now my question is, and this is a question again of age, we say nothing is getting better, because we've known another time that was simpler, okay? But, you know, I mean, are the kids today, when they reach our age, going to go, nothing gets better? I'm sure of it. Yeah, I mean, sure it. nothing, it's not that nothing gets better, nothing accommodates our needs any longer. Does that make you sense? You old people's needs? Yeah, well, I mean, the needs of our age group. I mean, like, I think of when I was growing up, and I didn't, I didn't even have television when I first started out. All I had was radio, you know? And then I had the early days of television where there were only three networks, you know, and, and, and people were discovering the medium. And because they were discovering it, they were having little adventures, you know, and the network said, do anything you want to. We don't know what this, what this medium does. Oh, you mean the, people, the producers and directors? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yes, we know a better day, but for different reasons, probably because of the simplicity uh, of, of the times. But, you know, I, I do think about today and I do think about kids growing up in this day and age and saying, how do they perceive it? Do they perceive this as being the good old days someday? And I, I hope not. Well, they don't have a choice. This is this will be their good old days, just yeah. like our childhoods are our good old days. If, if you think of it that way, I mean, yeah. I just have been fascinated by the watching being an observer of everything that's gone on through my life and how things have changed. Yeah. Um, and it's huge. I mean, and you're right about media. There's so much more media. There's just, so there's so much more entertainment, if that's what you want to call some of it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no way to keep up. I just saw a story the other day that um, because we're, we really are living through a golden age of television drama, that television critics just there's there's so much good stuff they can't possibly watch it all anymore. Nobody can keep up anymore. Yeah. And uh, I just got I've, I'm sure you've seen the commercials that I think it's BBC has a whole new pay service, so they're taking all of their stuff off of Netflix and other services, and they will have their own that costs seven or eight dollars a month. How many seven or eight dollars a month can you pay? I, I mean, I, you know. <laughs> well, what they're going to do is they're all going to become very competitive against each other, but people are only going to be able to buy a certain amount. So, I mean, like, for instance, I would probably not take the BBC pay service, mainly because I know ways of getting it for free. But anyway, um, <laughs> and I, I do think the more of these there are, the more bootlegging is going to take place because people aren't going to want to have to pay for all those services. Well, you can't. I mean, a normal person can't. By the time you pay your cable bill, although I know a lot of people are un unplugging cable, I haven't figured out how to do that here yet. Um, uh, still, by the time you seven dollars here, nine dollars there, I think I think Netflix is up to ten or eleven dollars a month. Well, I'm paying I'm paying fourteen uh, because I get the high def the uh, 4K service. So I get a higher. Is it that much of a difference? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, even on your regular stuff, it up it upgrades it and makes it look much better. Oh yeah, 4K is worth it. But 4K costs as much as the old TV sets used to cost now. So it's not like it's an added expense. So if your TV set goes, well, the next one should be a 4K. It's not going to cost you any more than you would have paid from the old days for the non-4K. The thing is, television sets never die. As far Vacuum cleaners die. Stoves and refrigerators die. Uh, television sets never die. I've never had one that died. I just wanted something different whenever I bought one. Well, I had one that was dead on. Years. I had one that was dead on arrival, but you know that can happen, you know. So, uh, but uh, I want to um, ask you a question. But uh, but but you're right. I mean, what they is they have no moving parts. That's the reason why. Oh, okay. I want to ask you a question. Uh, somebody asked me this, and brand new acquaintance I had just been introduced to a, a week or so ago asked me, it was a mid-aged person, mm -hmm. 40s, 40 to 45, said, what do you do all day if you don't go to work? Well, I just had to laugh. But I don't want to answer that yet on the air. I want you to answer it for me. You know something? I, I, I really waste my time. I really waste it. You know, I come in and I potchkey around with the computer a little bit and you know, uh, then I, um, uh, maybe, maybe like I do something like this, I do some interviews about this time of the day with various people. Um, and, and that's my day. I mean, after we're through here, I'm going to get in a cab and go over to Costco and do my <laughs> weekly shopping. You know, um, it's really exciting. I mean, what I was saying the other day on, do you on the, shop a lot? I shop at, Co I go to Costco and shop. And sometimes my wife goes up with her friend to Stu Leonard's, and I go with them up to uh, Westchester. I'm just wondering if it's genetic, because when your mother visited us once, when we were still married in Manhattan, and she had grown up there on the Lower East Side, no, you she, didn't want she, to go she didn't, with us, no, so she, she, she wanted... She didn't want to grow up in I, the Lower East Side. She grew up in the Bronx. Well... That contradicts something that happened while I was oh, out okay. here on the day I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, but she wanted to go shopping. You didn't want to go, so I have to go with your mother. That woman, who was then in her 60s, I'm guessing, yeah. walked me practically through every street in Manhattan and every damned store. And until I was just, I'm not a shopper unless I need something. And um, But she is. And then we ended up on the Lower East Side, maybe for lunch or a snack or something. And she would point out to me, she would point out that we lived up there and on whatever floor in the building. And there's the grocery store. And we came around a corner and there was a pickle shop. She said, let's go in here. And we go in there and she looks behind the counter and there's a man there who's about her age. And she, go, she goes, Moshi! And he goes, Ruth! And they had gone to school together, and now he was running maybe, his father's maybe, pickle joint. Well, they I, they lived in the Bronx, but it could have been they started out in the Lower East Side and maybe, then moved to the Bronx. The you know, that was upscaling it. But she really wore me out. So I just wondered if the shopping thing was genetic. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if the shopping thing is genetic. I mean, I, I, I'm not one of these people who likes to go shopping, you know. I, I if, if, the, if you want me to go shop for clothes, I don't even put the clothes on. I look at the size and hope they're going to fit. I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to go into one of those dressing rooms and take my shoes off and my pants off to put on another pair of pants that I don't like. You know, so I mean, uh, so I. So how many? How often do you go wrong? Does it not fit when you get home? Well, I'm now married, of course, and she forces me to try them on. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. But uh, in in the case of the old days, uh, most times, it, to me, you know, I was making decent money. So if I went home and they didn't fit, I said, "Fuck it." <laughs> you know, didn't cost me that much. Most of the time, they fit. You know, if there was anything that bothered me, is once I had them on, they didn't look that good. You know, they didn't they didn't have a kind of cut I wanted or something like that. But I mean, I, I just something I something new that yeah. you wouldn't know anything about. Women's clothes, women's pants, they don't anymore. They don't put enough pockets in her. They put no pockets in many of them. So you always have to have a handbag with you because there's nowhere, no pockets to put anything yeah. in. And it's really, really irritating that all you want to do is go to the store yeah. and you've got a 
make sure everything is in your handbag. So while I was sitting there in the hospital two different times in the past two weeks or four days, when I actually felt good while they were figuring out how to treat me, yeah, and I had nothing to do except that I was plugged into four IVs and eight monitors and cables going everywhere so I couldn't move around. Um, I just had nothing to do. I ran out, and the book I brought was too short, and I'd finished that in the first day. So I had nothing much to do, just sit around and think. I'm watching all the nurses and the doctors, and, of course, they all wear scrubs, and they have tons and tons of pockets. They have pockets that fit cell phones and pockets with scissors and pockets with who knows what they carry around with them. And so when I got home, I checked online. And I bought myself a pair of black scrubs. Ah! Pants, not the top. <laughs> and I've got a perfect size cell phone, cell phone pocket on the thigh of one leg. And I've got smaller ones where you could put a driver's license or some change if you were just going out to buy, I don't know, ice cream or something. And they're perfect. They're just perfect. I should, I should get myself a pair of those. That sounds like they're great. I do have a pair of them. I'm going to buy more. I maybe I'll get the You're top wonderful. two and make everybody think I'm a nurse. <laughs> well, or a doctor. Or I'll get a doctor's coat and I'll put some phony hospital Did name on it. Did you know the length of a doctor's coat is, has meaning? Does it? Yes. That while you're still in training or... Boy, what you learn when you get cancer. My you God. You have a short one. Well, let me finish. You have yeah. a short one. But when everything's done and you're a full-fledged doctor, then you get a longer coat. Really? That's how it works. Yes. Son of a bitch. I didn't know that. <laughs> length didn't is know, still a bit. Uh, length is still matters, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I'm spending way too much time with medical people when I start to learn things like this, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, so anyway, so I uh, and I hate going shopping with my wife because the way women shop, it just drives guys nuts. Just drives them nuts. Because you look at stuff and you look, do I want this? Then maybe you go and you try it on. Does this look good on me? I mean, it's it, it's a it's it's a ritual, but with us, it's let's get the fuck out of here. I don't want to have to sit here. But anyway, you were asking about what I do the rest of the day, and the the answer is absolutely nothing because I have nothing to do, you know. And that's okay. I'm getting a little bored of it. Yes. Have yeah. you thought about what you're going to do about being bored? Uh, I think about going out, but then again, you know, I mean, I know how much you love New York, but New York has changed a lot, and it's not the exciting, wonderful place it used to be. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, uh, uh, I don't have the same love for it that I used to have, uh, and uh, I, I don't know what to say about it beyond that. You know, so when I go out, there's nothing to do, you know. And plus, I mean, normally during the day, what did I do? I worked, right? So you really had something to do that occupied your time. So I do my work. I go on at 10 o'clock at night and do this little, little show, which is, you know, more and more making me realize that it is insanity because insanity, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again with the same result. And this is exactly what my life has become. Um, Can I tell you? Yeah, your bandwidth. Yeah, I, I you, got you, it's lucky it's very strange. Let me tell. Let me, wait, hold on, hold on a second. While you before you go on, let me just tell the audience: if she starts getting blurry and then comes back clear again, it's because there's some bandwidth on her end that probably is fluctuating. Okay, but we can still see you. And of course, the more blurry it gets, the younger you look. So you know. Oh, I don't see. I don't really care about that. Actually, I spent my whole life, as so many women do taking off the same 10 or 15 pounds that accumulated and got us too chubby. Yeah. And one of the things that I always wanted were cheekbones. Look at me. I've lost so much weight. I now have cheekbones. I need to gain weight now, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a um, whole life spent losing weight. Now I try to get, it's much harder to gain weight. Yeah, well, the trouble is that losing weight is wonderful. I mean, I <laughs> noticed how much weight I've lost, which is 55 pounds, and I looked at me the other day full length, and compared to the way I was, my face is more gaunt. So it's you know if you and lose what if, we if you no but if, no but when I was heavier, it it 
right. look it, fuller. It fills it out. It, it fills it out. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you want to look young, folks, uh, just get fat. I don't know. Maybe that's the answer. And, and you know what else? Everybody who's young will look at you and say, there's an old person. Yes. Even when you're fat. Right. <laughs> right. But, but I got lucky about things to do because I started the blog before I stopped working for about a year. Mm-hmm. And so when I stopped working, I just segued into a shorter commute from the bedroom to the computer. <laughs> and I still work as much as I did when I went to a job yeah. uh, working on the blog. And it's still, for some reason, after almost 15 years, it still engages me. So, you know, I fill up my days that way. But there's plenty that I have to let go because I don't have time for it all. So. Yeah. Okay. Hey, well, I just looked at the clock. We've run out of time. Okay. Doesn't it go by when you're griping about age? You know, it just flies. <laughs> I don't gripe. It's about it's it. like I'm life. Happy to be here. It's like life. I'm always amazed when I look back and go, did that many years just pass? You know. You know, somebody sent me an email of a photograph of one of the downtown New York City streets from 1900 or so. Yeah. Or 1910. Yeah. And the headline on the email said, "This was only a hundred years ago." And it feels that way now. I'm 77. He's about to turn 80. And 100 years ago, 100 years doesn't seem as long as it did when we were younger, does it? No, not at all. That's why I'm glad I live in the building I do, because it's much older than I am. <laughs> it's much older than I am. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> see, <clears throat> I'm, I'm gargling now. That's the pollen in the air. Hey, listen, always wonderful talking with you, and let's hope that you don't go back into the hospital so we can do oh, this God, again in no. a couple let's of weeks. We don't. So we can do this again in a couple of weeks. Ladies right. and gentlemen, uh, something that's wonderful you, if you can do it, and I don't know if a lot of you out there can do it, talk to your ex-wife every now and then. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Had a good time. Bye. Bye.